Panther fans, get ready for a deep dive on all 22 because the, the film don't lie. lie. And guys, I'm going to tell you, the film does not lie. We've don't been lie. pouring it over that. It tells the truth. Uh, and, in fact, I, minutes before I walked in here, I just finished up looking at some more film, went back and watched last year's Minnesota game. I'll have a little bit on that in a second. But let's get right after it because the lead of this show is let's get physical. Because we know in the month of December, it's all about what? Taking care of business at the line of scrimmage. And, guys, no doubt. When, when you look at this week's games, I'm telling you, it's playoff time. Mm -hmm. How about these week three matchups? Bring it. On Thursday night, uh, Saints at Falcons. Tasty. Eagles, Rams. Tastier. Panthers host Vikings. Yeah. I mean, you have mm. the upper mm. echelon. Yeah, whoever did the scheduling did it right, you know, and they could probably beat their chest, you know, make it like, I knew this was going to happen. You know, we're going to have these matchups. These are like some playoff matchups, and uh, I I'm excited for them. Yeah, you look at the schedule and what some of these teams in the top of the NFC are going through, it's going to be fun to see all the moving and, and positioning as this thing goes forward these next three or four weeks to see where these teams actually end up. Uh, being able to see themselves as the playoffs get close. Yeah. The, the reason the NFL is the daddy is because the regular season counts so much. Mm. There's no committees saying you go here, you go there. You know, you ride that parade float and this right. one. <laughs> you got to earn it on the field. Week one. I exactly. You earn it's it week grown one. up. It's right. grown up football. Yeah. Good point. And to that point, in December, as I said, it's about running the football. And stopping the run. So that's where we're going to start right now because a lot of talk this week uh, about the Panthers running game. And uh, and when you looked at the film against New Orleans, we broke that down heavily. What did you guys see? Well, I'll start it out. Yeah. Saw a lot of troubles, I think, on defense with some of their run fits. You know, there were some things out there that they just weren't executing the way we've seen them execute. Not able to enable that running game against the Saints. Uh, that they had the Saints had um, to really be effective, give Breeze a lot of uh, options as they're going down the field. And I think, you know, one of them that, that hit for the long one, Ingram ran that 72-yarder, it was perfectly blocked. It, you got to give a lot of credit to that okay. Saints offensive okay. line. However, there's a however. You know, those two big interior tackles for the Carolina Panthers need to do a better job because what I saw was that right guard, uh, Warford over there, uh, number 67, this, to me, was blocked perfectly because when you're looking at this play, you're going to see at the line of scrimmage, Kurt Coleman's in the box. They have a fullback in the backfield. That fullback's going to lead on that number one guy, so his guy is Coleman. The guard can pretty much sense, okay, who's that next guy to threat to where we want to run this ball, and it's Luke Keekley. So what he has to do is be able to help his center as much as he can on Star Latulale and find a way to get him jacked up, but always keeping an eye on Luke Keekley. And the guard and center execute it perfectly because he's able to use his steps and footwork to not only get a little help on Star, but actually push him over a gap. And that allows um, you know that hole to open up even bigger. But he kept an eye on Luke. And when he had to go, he went. He took care of his own house. His house was burning. It was Luke Keekley. That's the guy he's got to get. He gets on him. And so that really uh, set in motion success for that play. And Mike, I know you can maybe address this on the backside. Uh, there was troubles back there, too. Yeah, and, and when you really break it down, what I saw was there were, there were guys in their certain gaps, and this is gap control. So if I'm the linebacker, I got this gap. If I'm a D tackle, I got to stay in my gap. It's gap control. And the one thing that I saw from a 3,000 feet view was that David Mayo. So you at the top of the Superdome. That's it. Mm. At the top, looking down. <laughs> okay. Bird's eye view. <laughs> David Mayo. Every, I felt like everybody were in good spots, but the gaps will move. So the gap could be this big or it could be, you know, big where you can drive a truck through it. I saw David Mayo. All he had to do was to scoop over the top, and he would have been right there in place for that tackle. He stayed on his block uh, so long with his eyes not going right here that I felt like he missed the tackle, and, and, and some of the guys were in really good position to win. What happens is if you're not in your gap, in a gap-controlled scheme, it makes the linebackers and it makes the secondary guess where are my guys going to be. It starts up front with the D lineman if you're not in your gap. And so if a linebacker saying, well, 
man, I got to compensate for where he wasn't, where he should have been, then it puts people on the different pages, and that's when you start to see the big runs. And in this particular, any time a running back goes downhill and he's barely touched, that's going to be some problems if somebody missed their gap. And then all of a sudden you're playing on your heels the rest of the game. Well, and I'll add quickly with Mayo, you know, the backside of that was an excellent scoop uh, on Kwan Short right there and actually drove him back and, and pushed him back on his back. And when you get a lot of trash in front of you as a linebacker, that can really slow you down. You're used to those guys holding that line of scrimmage where you've got some room to operate to be able to float over the top and make those tackles. And, and, I, and Panther fans, I want you to understand that the bottom line, we're not picking on guys, uh, you're not throwing people under the bus. But if we were in that room with that D line and with that front seven, these are the things you talk about, and that's what we're trying to show you here. Now, I'll, I'll give you a little analogy. This morning when I got ready to leave the house, I went, oops, where's my wallet? Now, question is, <laughs> was it lost or was it misplaced? Right. Okay? And I throw that back to you guys. When you look at what went on with this defense, you have to make corrections. Right. We know we have good gap integrity. We had it in that game. There were some cases where we had perfect gap integrity. Where guys, uh, one, one playing instance, I, I broke this down on self-scout. Mario Addison is – Great place to turn that run inside, and then the linebacker flows to his gap, and and Kwan flows to his gap. So you had it. So you know it's there. Yeah. Right. You know these guys yeah. have the talent. So my question is, is it lost or misplaced? Because you got four games to figure that out. Yeah. Just misplaced a little yeah. bit. It's going to be found. Hopefully, it's this week against a pretty strong running team with Latavius Murray and the Vikings coming to town. But. You've seen more consistency of gap control, stopping the run, and doing that over the course of the season. And that's what you measure this team by. That was not as good a performance as we would have liked against the Saints, but it's not lost. It's something that, you know, they get back to work. It's always working on your craft. It is a craft. You work on that, and it will get better. I get a nickel every time somebody uses that <laughs> word, craft. But bottom line is I found my wallet. Oh, so good, state good. troopers, stand down. <laughs> I'm going to be getting me on the way home. Well, you were going to get carted at the store, man. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, boy, as we look forward, we know how big this game is with the Minnesota Vikings. And the thing that I tried to drill down on film all week is Case Keenum. Saw him last year with the Rams. Who is this guy? Yeah. I mean, who is this guy the Panthers are facing? You know, he's a, he's a guy that I don't think – a lot of guys have really paid attention to, you know, coming into this year. And I, I think that he is grabbing people's attention. And I, I think when we, we looked at the film on him, there's some, there's some good and there's some bad, right? And in the good is he's going to take that easy money. Mm. He's going to take that little check down. Going to grab it. He's going he's gonna to toss it. He's going to take that bootleg, and he's just going to dump it off and let the – let the talent do the rest of the work. Uh -huh. And that's hard. That's hard in today's world because a lot of people want that, that big, big play, and they want to be the guy. And I think that he's in a position where they have, they have tried to, you know, give his position away, but they're winning. I remember just a few weeks ago, was, should he start, should he not, you know, but he is winning, and you can't argue when a team is winning. And they're at the top of the mountain right now. But there, there some, there's one play in particular, though, that I question – um, is he too conservative where they had a route and his outside receiver is just doing a fly and it was a breakdown coverage from the Falcons. And he had an easy touchdown. All he had to do was put the ball in the air and it was catch, touchdown, but he chose to check down. So and, and it looked like he was staring right at his receiver. So it makes me wonder, is he too conservative at times? Is he willing to take that, willing to take that chance to chuck the ball downfield? But at the end of the day, you can't argue with the win-losses of this team. I think that he understands that they have a very, very great defense mm. and that if he doesn't turn the ball over and he brings his risk count down, that they can run the ball, like we talked about, and let the defense do the rest. At the end of the day, if I'm the Panthers' defense or this team, you know that you've got to correct what you Messed up last week because the Vikings are going to try you in that category. They're going to try those same runs. You knock that in the dirt, and then the game will settle down. 
But I think that this uh, this this quarterback is is managing this team very well right now. Yeah, and it, you know, with Case Keenum, it's a story of this is his sixth season. In those first five seasons, I did a little research. Look, he played in 26 games, 24 touchdowns, 20 interceptions, pedestrian, mm-hmm. average at best, uh, completing about 58 percent of his passes. But these first 11 games that he's had um, through 2017. He's got 16 touchdowns, five interceptions, and 10% more in his completion percentage at 68%. Mm. So he's actually, he's le- he's I think, leveled up in his play. He's definitely playing better, but great weapons around him and a very sound game plan in terms of the whole team. We're going to play great. They're, gonna, they're playing what the Panthers want to do, great defense and very uh, sound offensively. You don't have to take tons of risk manage some of those things and I think what he does best uh, is something that they've been able to game plan for and you look at him uh, you know a lot of what he does is some misdirection and some play action that sets up so much he had a great play against um, uh, last week against the Falcons where you know the running game's been strong with Latavius Murray they fake the run and he does a little bootleg out of there and he's got some levels of receivers you got one uh, tight ends going deep downfield you got Stefan Diggs coming across who opens up right away. There's pressure in his face, but he knows where he wants to go with the ball. He can go deep or he can go right to that flat. He chooses to go with digs. And then the other tight end for them, David Morgan, puts a phenomenal block on the corner. It's a very simple play. He knows where he's going with the ball. There's not a lot of thinking about it, and it gets a big play for the Minnesota Vikings offense. That's what they've set him up in, great opportunities like that, and that's how he's been able to, I think, level up his play. He doesn't have to do a lot of the Tom Brady-type things or Peyton Manning things where he's just reading that whole field and making decisions. And we'll leave it, you know, a lot of credit to that offensive line. They run the ball very well. And they've only given up nine sacks this year. That's a big-time number. That is. That is a good number. One of the things is we looked at them against the Falcons. Obviously, the M.O. was to go into that game and not make a lot of mistakes and keep the score low because, you know, you got good defense, as you guys have said. One of the things I looked at that I liked was the way the Falcons got hands on receivers because anytime Mm -hmm. you're playing against a West Coast team, It's all based on timing. It's based on reads. And a lot of times that ball is going to come out and go to a spot where the receiver should be. So as a defense, isn't it incumbent upon us, Ruck, to make sure that they're not getting free releases and getting into those spots where that ball is going to be? Yeah, you got to mess up the timing on those routes. That means that you've got to be physical as a secondary. That means getting up in their face, jamming them, knocking their timing off, knocking them off their route tree, to mess up that time because that quarterback's going to go one, two, three, step, plant, and he's going to throw. So if you can if you can mess up that timing, that's going to that's going to help you. Um, and I think that's what uh, will be beneficial in winning this game for this Panthers team is again getting pressure. Uh, you know Mario Addison. I tell you what, he is just he's just starting to really come into his own. Um, you know, and and having a young guy like that when you have Charles down. Being able to step up, especially in this pass game, and, and putting pressure on a quarterback like this, sometimes with these shorter routes, you got to get your hands up. But if he holds that ball, guys like Mario Addison got to step up, get continue that pressure on that quarterback, and make it uncomfortable for him. And, and Mario's done a good job. And there was a couple plays in the Saints game where he he's got some power. Kevin, right here, I want to jump to our last segment because uh, after the first drive of the Saints game, we thought it was going to be a shootout. And something just seemed to miss with the Panthers' offense from that point forward. I mean, there were some bright moments, came back, scored late. What's going on? You know, um, you know that first drive, usually scripted. We know that from the Saints. That's what you, they usually do with Sean Payton and Drew Brees. And they have a good idea with what they want to do. Um, you know, it's hard to really put a, a finger on exactly one thing that went wrong. But, uh, you know, after that first drive, that was a clean drive. They had some nice, they spread the ball around. Five run, five pass. Various guys got the ball. Um, You know, from there, it seemed a little bit herky-jerky, and what compounded the problem was really some mistakes. Mm -hmm. Some penalties started happening, uh, a couple of drops here and there, uh, situations where, uh, you know, maybe they didn't get as good a block in the run game, and so you couldn't really put a finger on one thing. It was a lot of what we saw with the defense. You know, it's just a little breakdown here and there, and I think as a group, uh, you know, went in there very prepared, but um, you know the Saints. You got to give them a lot of credit. 
they had an excellent game plan. They made the fewer mistakes, and that's really what was the difference in that game. And so I think the Panthers really have gone back to work this week and just focused on details. That's the part of the work that people don't really realize at home when they're watching the game on Sunday is you go right back to work, and you're not doing a ton of complicated things. It's about what are the nuts and bolts, what are the things we got to get better at, making some of those tackles, not dropping passes, being clean on penalty situation, uh, especially at key times. And I think they'll bounce back. I think it's great that they're you know, two games on the road, now three at home. That's going to be a big factor, I think, in their success as they head towards the playoffs. Well, I tell you what, it will be big time because we, we told you what's at stake on Sunday as the Minnesota Vikings roll into town. We are just about out of time. But, Panther fans, remember, if it happens between the lines, we'll talk about it here on All 22 because the film, film don't, don't lie. lie. We'll see you next time.